Crystal and crystalline, there is a difference. By definition, all minerals are crystalline. A solid substance, such as a mineral, is crystalline when its atoms have a highly ordered geometric structure. And when its atoms are regularly arrayed in repetition, like a pattern on three-dimensional wallpaper. built from minute building blocks of its highly ordered atomic structure called a unit cell. These are extended in three dimensions. If this three-dimensional extension of the unit cell reveals faces that are a reflection of its internal structure, then we have a crystal. Here, a crystal of halite, or natural salt. If, however, the unit cell is built so that faces are not a reflection of this internal structure, the structure is crystalline, not a crystal. Here, crystalline salt or halite, the same mineral but not a crystal. So all minerals are crystalline. They have a highly ordered crystalline structure. But they only form as crystals when this internal structure is revealed in reflection on their external surface or face. There are six types of building block which result in six crystal systems. Isometric, as in this pyrite crystal. Tetragonal. Here in a crystal of wolfenite. Orthorhombic. A crystal of bomerite. Hexagonal. A crystal of beryl. Monoclinic. Represented by a crystal of gypsum. And triclinic. a crystal of axonite. Each mineral must have as its basic building block one of these six types. Each mineral must belong to one of these six crystal systems. This is a piece of massive quartz. It is a mineral it is a highly ordered atomic crystalline structure, but it displays no external crystal form. This also is the mineral quartz. Its external crystal form is clearly visible, and it is therefore a crystal. From the crust of the earth, exactly as they exist in nature, with an internal structure ordered and repeated to an infinite degree, crystals of minerals reveal to the human eye a beauty to forever challenge the creativity of man.
Man's awareness of minerals has not been a gift of this 20th century, but rather a heritage of his life on the planet. Recorded history abounds with evidence that the great progressive and significant peoples knew and studied minerals. Sumerian schoolboys memorized lists of minerals 2,200 years before the birth of Christ. Masterpieces of mineral usage were common with the ancient Egyptians, who have left us this oldest paper map of a gold mine in the desert east of the Nile Valley. The Jews recorded much about mineralogy in the Bible. Job, verses 1 and 2. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and the brass is molten out of the stone. The first textbook on minerals, the Book of Stones, was authored by the Greek philosopher and naturalist Theophrastus about 300 years before Christ. Agricola. So comprehensively did he document the mining and processing of minerals in his book De Re Metallica that to this day it is unsurpassed. Through the ages, chemists have been identifying the inorganic chemicals of newfound minerals. Each mineral has its own chemical composition and formula. Some are very simple, consisting of only one element, such as gold. Some have two elements, such as pyrite, fool's gold. Others have formulas so complex and long that they become an apothecary's nightmare. The common mineral hornblende. But chemistry alone will not determine the mineral. The same chemical may form two or several minerals. If carbon forms in the crust of the earth and occurs in black hexagonal crystals, we have graphite. Because of its extreme softness, a very useful industrial mineral. If the carbon, however, experiences tremendous pressure in the crust of the Earth, and the atoms of its crystalline structure are squeezed into a cubic array, it is now the mineral diamond, whose particular atomic configuration makes it the hardest mineral known to man. So, the combination of chemistry and crystal structure makes a mineral what it is. This combination identifies the substance not as animal or vegetable, but mineral. Man's continued experimentation with nature's gift of minerals has dramatically advanced his knowledge of their origin and the technology of their application. In high pressure temperature laboratories, it is possible to make minerals synthetically. In doing so, we can determine what pressure and temperature within the earth combined to form the natural mineral. It is often less expensive to synthetically reproduce minerals under controlled conditions than to mine natural ones. Synthetics may also be doped or modified with respect to color and other industrial requirements. Experimentation and increased knowledge of the origin of natural minerals has resulted in their synthetic application to ceramics, cements, glass, and a nearly limitless procession of new products, in addition to new gemstones. Yet man is still unable to fulfill the alchemist's dream to create the metal of the sun, gold. Minerals are physical things with physical properties. 